when I was putting, you know, helping um, to put this together, it just, it, one thing that really impressed me was the way that parishioners, past and present, um, have undertaken the safeguarding of our parish history. Um, history is something that um, it's interesting because it doesn't really belong to anyone. It's something that is, I think, entrusted to a generation for a period of time. They have to be good stewards of that, um, stewards of that treasure. And so that's what we have been done since we were stewarding um, this our patrimony. So um, I thank all of those parishioners who were so uh, necessary in collecting and um, <coughs> Preserving our history. There are members here who were on the Bicentennial Committee in 1995 who put together the Comprehensive History Book, people who helped with the application for becoming a basilica, who also did a lot of research, um, and then just individual par parishioners who have consistently been very much involved um, throughout this process. So thank you to Tim Deere, I know that he couldn't be here tonight. Um, to Kim Guy, our parish historian, to Mary Petrino for all that she does for the Basilica. Um, thank you so much. It really was um, your work that allowed for this museum to be created. So I'm blessed to have been a part of it. Um, thank you. So I'll end my remarks here by um, thanking one last person, which is Father Hathaway. Um, Father, thank you for trusting in me and allowing me to be a part of this um, wonderful project, and um, I'm honored to have helped the Basilica uh, share its history in this way, so thank you. So, Father Hathaway, I think he needs no introduction, but the rector of the Basilica, um, so give him a warm round of applause. Thank you, Virginia, and of course, none of this would have happened without Virginia, uh, so let's thank her and give her a warm round of applause. And Virginia arrived on the scene uh, originally to help us bring our uh, history up to date. We knew uh, we landed on the right person to bring so many projects that we could never get to, to fruition. Uh, Virginia is very talented, she's smart and hardworking, so that's a great combination coming together and Virginia, we're grateful uh, for all that you've achieved, not only here but also in our uh, new history book that will be coming out on December 8th. Um, looking ahead to our 230th anniversary, we'll celebrate throughout the entire year of 2025. Uh, we've got a committee started and uh, looking for new members all the time, uh, but we'll have many different aspects of our parish that we'll be celebrating uh, that, so thank you. Uh, thank all of you for coming. Again, as Virginia said, uh, if you don't know your past, it's hard to know who you are or where you're going. So our history is a treasure which we carry with us, and uh, particularly this parish uh, known for, uh, people are known for loving history. I think that's what brings many people to Old Town is just loving history and architecture. And certainly uh, the Catholic Church is very much part of that story. That was one of our reasons for desiring to have this museum is to tell that story because sometimes uh, the Catholic Church is not included or it's, um, it's somehow less than some of the other groups and their contributions. So I wanted to highlight that. Uh, so many people I think were probably the largest congregation in Old Town. Uh, but sometimes not always appreciated by our neighbors or people aren't always aware of our heritage or of the contribution of Catholics to Virginia and to our nation. So uh, we wanted to both uh, highlight that to how uh, Catholics uh, through the Basilica have uh, been a very much a part of the life here. Uh, thank Father Peter Clem uh, for being here tonight. Uh, Father Keith O'Hare, uh, Pastor of St. Louis, we're here they just celebrated their 75th anniversary. Uh, are you up there in the picture? There you are. Okay, perfect timing. And of course, that was named, Father, as I learned from your anniversary celebration for one of the pastors at the Basilica at St. Mary's, Father Louis Smet. Uh, after he, because I thought, well, wasn't that audacious to name a pastor after, or parish after yourself? But it was after he died uh, by the people who were so grateful for all that he had done to get that mission uh, up and running. Um, 
Now there's uh, Kitty Guy has uh, written the update to our parish and Virginia's been editing that book. Um, as I mentioned, on December 8th, we're also, uh, Bishop Burbage will be coming for what I consider the crowning of our Jubilee year by crowning our image of Mary, which we believe is the oldest uh, image of Our Lady that's been venerated in our diocese. Uh, we received it on our 100th anniversary in 1895, and uh, so it's been in our church those 130 years, and an Episcopal crowning is really a coronation. So uh, now Our Lady received the crowning from the Trinity in heaven, but this will be uh, the crowning by our bishop, and we hope for it to become a place of pilgrimage uh, since so many people have brought their intentions to Jesus through Mary here. Uh, as I mentioned, we'll be hearing more about the events in our uh, anniversary year, our Jubilee year of 230. Um, but I ask you now, before we go down, and we're going to uh, bless the museum in about 10 uh, or 15 minutes. So if you'd like to grab a glass of Prosecco, I think those, is that downstairs? Or a, a, a bite to eat, and we'll meet you downstairs in about 15 minutes. Might be hard for all of us to squeeze in down there, but we'll have the blessing, which is relatively short, and then you'll have time to either come back up here and continue socializing or to enjoy the exhibit. And again, it does start in the hallway with um, the Catholicity of England, which was Catholic for a thousand years before the uh, Reformation, before King Henry VIII, and then all of the changes that happened subsequent to that. So you'll see that depicted in art, as well as a list of 80, um, or it's 120, Catholic martyrs, uh, mostly priests, that died during that time of persecution. Um, and then you go in uh, to the kind of diagonally into the museum. Uh, but you'll see that in just a few minutes. So thank you all for coming. And uh, once again, thanks to all those who made this possible, and Mathis uh, for arranging the food. And uh, again, Virginia, to you, and welcome your family uh, who are here tonight in such great numbers. And uh, sisters, we welcome you too. It's great to see you, your faithful witness is always inspiring to us. As I mentioned, we'd love to have you teaching in our school, but we know you have many commitments and it's difficult <laughs> to do everything. But the Franciscan Sisters of the Eucharist, one of the bright lights of uh, Vatican II religious life. So thank you for being here, sisters. Uh, let's just uh, say grace in case we haven't already. Uh, but why don't we include that in a prayer to the Holy Spirit, asking our museum uh, that it be fruitful and fulfill the mission that we hope it will in terms of the new evangelization. Uh, let's pray in echo format if you repeat after me. O Holy Spirit, o Holy Spirit the soul of my soul, soul, of my soul I, worship and adore you. I worship and adore you. Enlighten and guide, Enlighten and guide. strengthen and console me. Tell me what I must do and command me to do it. I promise to be submissive to all that you permit to happen to me. Only let me know your will. Amen. And if, by the way, we're on the feast of Our Lady. Today is the feast of the Holy Name of Mary. Uh, and that's by design that we wanted to open on a feast of Mary, who is our patron and we owe everything to uh, bringing our needs to Jesus. Uh, let's uh, say grace together. Bless us, O Lord, and these are the gifts your child has received from the God through Christ Lord. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and that's of course retroactive on anything you might have eaten. <laughs> okay, we'll see you in about 10 minutes. <laughs>